Today I'm going to be changing up the upper strut mount on my E90. Um, what I've noticed actually is on the highway or just at like cruising speeds, I'd feel a bit of a shimmy in the front end, almost like the wheel, the tires bad or there's a bend in the rim. But I just did a quick examination and I noticed that uh, this upper strut mount is completely shattered. It actually seems a bit dangerous. Another thing you'll notice actually when you turn the wheel, um, if you turn hard or like in the morning when it's cold you get a really nasty creaking sound coming from the front right area. So that's what prompted me to look at this. I thought maybe the bearings inside there were dried up or, or whatnot. And then when I take a look in here I noticed that the upper strut mount was completely perished. Now, I'm wondering if this is actually my fault. Because, well here's the new part. It's just a generic uh, Monroe strut mount. That's the part number. I got it for 42 bucks from Advanced Auto Parts. It was nice they had it on the shelf and I, I borrowed their spring compressor tool. So, if you notice, so I have to change that out obviously, it's not safe. But, I actually lowered these shocks down on both sides because I dropped the subframe to do my uh, oil pan gasket on this car. And I put it back, you know, I tried to line these up and the alignment seemed good. It's been a long time, you know, many, many miles since I've done this. I guess it's getting on a year since I've done my oil pan gasket. But I'm thinking the reason it failed is because of install error. Because when I put it back, I wasn't, I didn't pay attention to the fact that there's a, an arrow. You can just make it out there, that little square bump. There's an arrow on these. On this one, it actually has this little uh, nipple that sticks up that would line up to that hole there. And I don't believe these ones have that. So there's no way I could have put this one on wrong, but when I put that one on, I should have had that facing this way. So maybe that causes this to fail, I don't know. I'm not really sure what really prompts that. I'm gonna double check that side too. That one's still good, but I'm gonna double check that one just to make sure it's still in good shape before I uh, uh, put it all back together. I mean, just make sure that the alignment is proper. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to remove that strut. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is take the wheel off. Okay, so I got the wheel off. The previous owner actually changed out uh, these struts just before I got the car, or like shortly before I got the car, so they're in relatively good shape. They're Bilstein's. So there's a couple things we gotta tackle. We're gonna have to go over to after this pinch bolt here. We have to just pop that sensor off. And then it looks like we're gonna have to put a wrench on this side. I'll tell you guys what size it is. Um, there is this bracket here, which is for the sway bar end link, as well as the bracket that supports your brake line. I'm gonna use, a, I actually have an impact gun. So, um, you know, by the way, I have the car set up on a jack stand. I have this impact gun, Milwaukee, it's really good. So I'll probably use it to zip these off. It's gonna make my life easier, but sometimes you have to, these can be a bit of a bitch to remove and they can spin if you don't have an impact or you don't have a way to support it. So I'll show you guys probably on the other side of that uh, end link, there is a little place to stick a wrench to stop it from rotating. And up at the top here, we have 313, so I'm gonna get those up now. On the top here, to avoid uh, removing this bar, you can just use a wrench, 13 wrench, use the open end to get on it. And you can thread these off. The new uh, strut mount comes with new bolts, so I'm not gonna reuse these. But just be conscious of the fact that you need a wrench for these two, and then the socket will work for these two. This ending bolt is a 16. I'm gonna try zipping it off with my gun.
appears to be spinning, so I'm going to have to support it on the other side. I'll tell you guys what size wrench I needed for that. Okay, so the other side of this uh, end link is a 17. So just hold it with an open end and 17 wrench. Like that. That's under pressure, but we gotta pop this end link out now. Take the pressure off that end link. Just sticking a jack underneath the caliper. Very little pressure. Just so I can take that out without the fight. Slides right out there. And if I lower back down. Took all the strain off of that end link. Makes life much easier. So now this bracket just moves out of the way. It gets secured on the other side. We're going to want to go after this little cable here. Probably need a screwdriver for that. We just have this pinch bolt now. This pinch bolt is 18. I'll probably have to get this camera out of the way to zip this off, but I'll show you guys after. The impact made this made this very easy. Came off. There's the nut. So I'm gonna start working on getting the strut out now. There's actually this bracket that holds the cables that, I'm, that I just pulled off for now. So I probably have to hammer this out now. So my placement on my jack stand was interfering with this lowering down, but it was actually a good thing because it held things in place until I could jack up the car. Brake lines unbolted so it's not under tremendous strain, but I don't want to leave it like that for very long. I unclipped this from here just to make sure it will be well out of the way. It was kind of un difficult to unplug so I'm not going to worry about that for now. Stress just hanging there now. Now I need to wedge something in between here just to relieve the pressure off this pinch. So I'm going to get something in there with the hammer, spread it open a bit so this will just pop out a little easier but it's ready to pull out. So this is how I'm handling it. Basically wedged a pry bar in there. It creates a bit of a gap so that you can actually, it's still the, the shock will be in there tight, but if you just give this section here, this little tab, a light knock with a hammer while holding it straight up, it will come out. So I'm working on that now. Okay, I got the strut out. Basically by, like what I showed, I just wiggle it back and forth after spreading this area with the pry bar and uh, I actually had to turn my steering wheel all the way to the left just to give me that better angle so that it could drop down far enough and let the truck shock come out. So I didn't have to touch any of these uh, arms, just the sway bar and leak to get the clearance to get it out. So now I'm going to set up my spring compressor tool on it and we'll change out the hat. This plate goes on top. See, so I'm an idiot basically. I didn't line up this hole appropriately with the hole on the car, which would be this hole here. So that's my bad. I don't know if that's what caused it to fail, but I would imagine that's why. So you have to take this little cover off to expose the nut. So 
anyway it's a little more foolproof on the new part because you can't even make it install flush until you have that little nipple lined up on the car so if I were to try it you see that the nipple lines up so you can't screw it up so and as far as I can tell the part looks correct so we're gonna set up the spring compressor tool on now and start compressing it. By the way, I have my jack stand holding up my rotor so it takes it straight off of the brake line. This is the kit that I got from uh, Advanced Auto Parts. They rent it out for 65 bucks and you get your money back in your, when you return it. I got my spring compressors uh, set up on the springs. Because of how there's only a couple, like four coils on this spring you have to kind of get the top part locked into the top hat and the bottom part at the bottom of the spring just so we'll be able to get a, an adequate amount of compression on the spring to release the strut mount. So anyway, just if you've never worked with one of these before you got to be extra careful. Try not to keep your hand directly in front of the hat in case something goes wrong or one of these spring compressors lets go. Just exercise caution when you're using one of these things. You pretty much have to use an impact gun to be able to compress it. Okay, so this is under an extreme amount of pressure and being extra careful, but because I can rotate the shock independently of the spring, that means it's not it's not applying a compression. It's not applying a outward pressure on the strut anymore, so I can release that top nut. This is the time you want to be extra, extra careful. They say it's not recommended to use an impact gun on this top uh, bolt, just because you can shear it off when you're tightening. You can shear the actual sh uh, shaft threads off of the actual strut. So I'm going to use a torque bar when I'm tightening. But for now, I've uh, be very carefully keep your hands away and just aim it. Uh, like so. So that way if anything lets go, it's gonna go flying and you're not your hands are not gonna be in the way. But here's my strut mount. So that wasn't bad. That's all I needed to do to be able to uh, stick the new one on. I'm not removing the spring or anything else, so just Gonna insert that back on. If you notice, there's actually an Allen head right there. So technically what you gotta do is stick an Allen head and use a wrench to tighten it down. Or like they say use a, uh, if you don't have an impact or if you don't, if you wanna do it properly, use a, a spark plug socket 21 stick an allen key through there and and then the end of the socket you'll find some threads where you can actually tighten down properly at the top of the hat there is just this washer i mean sitting inside that piece so that washer was part of this old hat so i'm going to just make sure Looks like it's something that should be carried over to the new part because otherwise it's just this exposed seal. Here's the old one. So it doesn't interfere in getting in the way. It just literally sits at the bottom of the bearing. So I'm going to be carrying it over to the new one. This is the proper way to do it. Get a 13 16 or 21 pretty much 13 16 um, spark plug socket stick it on get a six mil allen because of the rubber boot you gotta be prepared to stick it through like that so you can either use this the 22 7 8 or 22 oxygen sensor uh, socket or you can use a um, alternatively you can just use a 22 wrench but eh, I figured this is handy 
gives you a little more torque on it. So let's tighten this up. It actually slips right over the off and on over the Allen. See if you don't do it this way, you can use the impact to pull it off, but if you tighten with the impact, no matter how careful you are, you have a you run a good risk of shearing off the top of the shock. The actual threaded rod, and then you need a whole new strut, and your car is disabled. So keep that in mind. So even though I would love to just use my gun right now, I have a nice impact gun. I don't want to chance that. So far the Allen key hasn't rotated so I don't need to hold it. But you gotta keep an eye on it. It's good and tight. And now I gotta make sure that the the back part of the spring is lined up properly with the perch or with the seat and then slowly back off on the clamps. All right, struts all back together with the proper hat on there. I put this little plate that goes at the top of it and I'm gonna reinsert it back in the car. You know, reinstallation is just obviously the reverse. It's something remarkable, remarkable comes up as I'm reassembling that I think you guys should be aware of or conscious of, I will let you guys know. Um, and you know one thing I'd recommend if you guys can afford it or if you do work on your car once in a while or if you don't consider this job a little too daunting get an impact gun it, it's amazing this Milwaukee fuel M18 is awesome it's like unbelievable so handy these are the kind of jobs you just wouldn't tackle at home normally without having something like that or having an air compressor and whatnot so you can see I shot the That's what happened to I don't know if it was my fault. I kinda feel like it was. Anyway, we're fixing it up now. So I'll reinstall and I'll show you guys anything that comes up along the way. So no real surprises when reinstalling the strut. It's basically like I was saying, just obviously a reversal of the removal. Only thing I would recommend is when you're trying to raise the shock back up to bolt it up to the tower, just jack up this side a little bit. What that does is it takes the tension off of the sway bar so you can actually have an even tension. Otherwise it's pulling down and pushing up on the strut so you can't line it up to the holes and get it into place. But when you jack this side up it takes that tension off and then you can easily raise the strut up. Beyond that, there's nothing remarkable to really comment on in terms of uh, uh, reinstalling the strut. So I've installed it. Last tip would be you want to get the car le on level ground before you let the, the body settle to a natural position and then, um, then tighten down these bolts. The guide pin kind of forces you to, you know, doesn't let it really go too far out of whack, but when you line it down to ground level that lines itself right up and then you just give these a final torque. So basically it was definitely installer error which was my install error when I lowered the subframe to change my oil pan gasket I actually wasn't conscious of the orientation of this. So what, what I notice now is with this new um, mount the circle if you feel inside here you can feel that inner lip it's perfectly aligned inside the bore and that little arrow that you notice there that happens on pretty much every BMW um, when that's in the right position it, it centers everything into the correct orientation now I have to fix this side now since I wasn't conscious of it on this side this mount didn't go bad but when I put my hand inside there it's out of whack. It's it's shifted over and like it's 
not in the right spot. I have to lower the shock down a bit, rotate, bring it back into position so I'm in good shape. So I think these do fail over time. This car has 167,000 miles on it and the original, uh, and it appeared to be the original mount. The shock and spring have been replaced, but when you look at this mount, it looks uh, to be original. But I think probably the there's excess stress on this actual uh, component because of the way it was installed and that probably led to premature failure. The bearings are all dried up anyway. Sound crusty. So, you know, they only last so long anyway. But just be conscious of that when you're putting it back in. If you don't, if you buy this brand, it's not going to have the guide pin so you can put it in any orientation and not even realize you screwed up as I did. So that's how you change uh, a strut mount in pretty much any E90 and this is very similar for like even an E39, E46 like so many BMWs have the same type of mount even the same part number they've been using this mount forever I think even my E30 M3 has a similar mount and people use the top hats off of a uh, this car on that car even because they're more stiff so it's, been, it's very universal if you watch this video it will show you how to change the strut mount on like 90% of BMWs out there but this is specifically on an 08 335i it's got the sport package and uh, yeah so that's how you do it I'm going to fix up that side and then it should be in good shape I'll, I'll, I bet you it's going to drive smoother and better after this so thanks for watching and good luck